Well, thank you for joining us again for our Friday devotional. Sorry about that. We had some technical difficulties. Not uncommon. But we overcame. We've been in a Bible study titled uh, Battle Ready. Today is the last um, lesson in that series. We will be in 1 Samuel chapter 17. If you'll join me for the reading of God's Word in a moment. Today we'll be looking at the, the life of David. We've been studying our spiritual armor, and now that you have that armor, you are ready to face giants. So we're going to look at the story of David and Goliath, the story of the great battle between David and the giant. If you would please join me in prayer before we get started. God, thank you that we can trust you with our lives. God, that we can trust you with our faith. God, that we can trust your word, that it's applicable to our lives today just as it was to David's life so long ago. God, we thank you that you are the same God that David served, the same God that we get to serve. God, open our hearts and our minds to your word that we not just hear it, but we are able to apply it to our lives. Thank you for your many blessings. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we start at a point in David's, early in David's life, and the story of David and Goliath. We're in chapter 17, and I'm going to begin in verse 17. Now Jesse said to his son, Take this ifya, of roasted grain and these ten loaves of bread for your brothers and hurry to their camp. Take along these ten cheeses to the commander of their unit. See how your brothers are doing and bring back assurance from them. There with Saul and all the men of Israel in the valley of Elah, fighting against the Philistines. Early in the morning, David left the flock with the shepherd and loaded up and set out as Jesse had directed. He reached the camp as the army was going out to its battle positions, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines were drawing up their lines facing each other. David left his things with the keeper of supplies and ran to the battle lines and greeted his brothers. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, stepped out from his lines and shouted his usual defiance, and David heard it. When the Israelites saw the man, they all ran from him in great fear. Now the Israelites had been saying, Do you see how this man keeps coming out? He comes out to defy Israel. The king will give great wealth to the man who kills him. He will also give him his daughter in marriage and will exempt his father's family from taxes in Israel. David asked the men standing near him, what will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Who is the uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? They repeated to him what they had been saying and told him, this is what will be done for the man who kills him. When Elab, David's oldest brother, heard him speaking with the men, he burned with anger at him and asked, why have you come down here? And with whom did you leave those few sheep in the desert? I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. Now what have I done, said David? Can I even speak? 
He then turned away to someone else and brought up the same matter. And the men answered him as before. What David said was overheard and reported to Saul, and Saul sent for him. David said to Saul, Let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, You are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a boy, and he has been fighting from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued it from the sheep from its mouth. Then it turned on me. I seized it by the hair and struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear, and, his un and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic and put his coat of armor on him and the bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tied, tried walking around because he was not used to them. I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I am not used to them. So he took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in his pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand approached the Philistine. Meanwhile, the Philistine, with his shield bare in front of him, kept coming closer to David, looked at David over and saw that he was only a boy, ruddy and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, I am a dog, and you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said, I'll give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. David said to the Philistine, Javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will hand you over to me, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. Today I will give the carcass of the Philistine army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And all those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. As the Philistine moved closer to attack David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. David ran and stood over him. He took the Philistine's sword and drew it from his scabbard. After he killed him, he cut off his head with the sword. The Philistines, Philistines saw that their hero was dead. They turned and ran. Then the men of Israel and Judah surged forward and with a shout and pursued the Philistines to the entrance of Gath and to the gates of Ekron. And their dead were strewn along the Samaritan road to the Gath and Ekron. When the Israelites returned from chasing the Philistine, they plundered their camp. David took the Philistine's head and brought it to Jerusalem, and he put the Philistine's weapons in his own tent. Saul watched David going out to meet the Philistine, and he said to Abner, commander of the army, Abner, whose son is that young man? Abner replied, I surely, as you live, O king, I do not know. The king said, find out whose son this young man is. 
As soon as David returned from killing the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul, with David still holding the Philistine's head. Whose son are you, young man? Saul asked him. David said, I am the son of your servant, Jesse of Bethlehem. And there lies the story of David and Goliath. In this passage, did you recognize there were other giants that David defeated that day? Maybe you didn't recognize them, and maybe you did because they're giants you've already faced yourself. Let's take a look at them. Because if you do not recognize that you've already faced some of these giants yourself, you will. We will all face giants in our lifetime. They come in many different forms. They can be giants of our own making. They can be pride, roots of bitterness, anger. Those are giants that we'll have to overcome. They can be giants beyond our control. The loss of a loved one, cancer, many other diseases strike us, financial loss and hardship, breakdown of a relationship, divorce. These giants come upon us and, and we have to face them and it's how we choose to face them that matters. And if we've donned the armor of God, we have far more ability than without it. I want to point out one of the first giants David faced that day came from his own brother, Elab. You know, oftentimes we face scrutiny from those closest to us. They know best how to scrutinize us. And, and our actions are the only thing that we're in control of there. Our actions being our response to that circumstance or the scrutiny, the, the charge that his brother gave him, here David is just doing what his father has asked him to do. Yet his brother attacks him for leaving the sheep in the desert, attacks his heart's motives for coming to the battlefield, though asked to by his father. David is just doing what he's told. And sometimes us in our Christian life, we go about just doing what we're told, and attacks come from the most unlikely of places. They can come from our, our closest circle, places we didn't expect an attack to come from, our loved ones, maybe elders or members of our church. But there's, there's something that we're in control of, and that's our reaction to that attack. We can deny Satan an attack when we choose to react in ways that glorify God. And we can see here, David just held fast. Uh, he didn't let that discouragement from his brother allow him to shriek away from the battlefield, allow him to shriek away from an opportunity to serve God. David asks, what will be done for a man who kills this Philistine, who removes the disgrace from Israel? We can look at David's heart, his motive with this statement, as he ends it with removes this disgrace from Israel. It's where D David's motivation came from. He knew of the stories of God's armies, the armies of Israel, defended and led by God to great victories. David respected God and, and could remember through stories and, and learning about 
the victories that the Israelites had, had witnessed up to this point. So he knew his God was real, and we can see David donning the armor of faith, his faithfulness that they served the one true God. We look at verse 33, where Saul replied, You are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a boy. He has been a fighting man since his youth. So here's somebody that he's truly going to look up to, the leader of the Israelites, who has nothing to offer him but discouragement. Here you are, a young pup. Who are you? You've not even been trained for battle. And you want to know who is going to remove this disgrace from Israel. I can see where David's brother, other men listening to this, this young kid, asking the question, who's going to stand up to this guy? Where's your faith? We serve the God of angels' armies. How is it that nobody is walking out to meet this Philistine? So you can, you can almost read into a sense of cynicism, sarcasm out of Saul. I think he's a little offended. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. And describes attacks from lions and bears. I think this probably only further aggravates Saul. To the point of making the decision to allow David to go out and fight. Saul said to David in verse 37, Go, and the Lord be with you. I've had people offer to pray for me, and I think their manner of offering to pray for me came out of some sarcasm. Well, I'll pray for you. I need the prayer, trust me. Will needs all the prayer he can get. But I don't think they were sincere in their statement. And this is kind of where Saul is responding to David, go and the Lord be with you, because you're going to need it. I have no faith that you are going to walk out and conquer this Philistine. He is a giant. No one in his trained army is willing to go out and meet him. And yet here's this young shepherd who has the faith and the willingness to go out and meet him. And it is recorded in our word, Saul's response. Go and the Lord be with you. It wasn't important here, Saul's faith. What was important was David's faith. That he had donned the shield of faith. In verse 43, he we can hear uh, Goliath heckling David. You come at me with sticks? I am a dog. So leading up to facing this opposing figure, a real giant of physical stature, David has already faced and conquered several giants right here. He's faced and conquered the giant of responsibility. His father Jesse had given him the responsibility of taking these supplies to a certain point, dropping them off, acquiring the information that his father sought, and coming home. I can only think of the frustration I would have as a father to learn that my son yeah, he did those things, but now all of a sudden he's marching out to meet the Philistine giant. <laughs> I'm sure that is not what Jesse intended for his son to do. Though David knew he had more of a responsibility to his God. Sometimes we worry about the responsibilities we've brought on ourselves and we let those outweigh the responsibilities we have to our God, our Father. 
It's a giant oftentimes we'll have to overcome. The giant of how do I manage my time? David defeats that giant and faces another giant. That giant of discouragement that comes from a loved one. And it's different. It's different when there's only so many people in this world that actually know you. And out of those limited number of people comes an attack. They're devastating. Sometimes people in their lives, they get a discouraging word from a father or a family member. And it cripples them the rest of their life. They think they're not worthy. They're not capable of rising above and beyond that level of discouragement that whoever that was bestowed upon them. It's a giant in their life. You're not good enough. You're not able to. You're not smart enough. Unfortunately, those kind of attacks can come from the people closest to us, and they're real. They will affect some the rest of their lives. Some find their spiritual armor and are able to fend off that attack. They're able to pull that flaming arrow out, deny Satan that attack, knowing that God made them far more than anybody could label them, knowing that God gifted them far greater than they'll ever acknowledge or realize they can deny that attack and they, they move on. There are fine examples in our Bible and, and in your life, people that you know, that have defeated that giant. So we see David make it up face to face to this giant. And again, he's heckled. Leading up to this fight, there were so many attacks on David that should have discouraged him from ever entering that battlefield. It's sure how Satan likes to attack us. There's a, there's a war going on, and each battle that we win helps defeat our enemy. And we not, we're not able to win every battle. We fail oftentimes. But if all we had in our life was victory, achievements, and success, well, we know that it's not our successes that we truly learn from, it's our failures. Sometimes we require a few scars to truly recognize and know that we're in a battle at all. We have to take a few hits. Maybe that's why we do. Maybe that's why we go through a few things in this life that we would choose not to have on our plate. We face a few giants that we would not go out and look for. We wouldn't seek. But sometimes these giants come and find us. They seek us out. And the one thing we are in control of is what's our next step? Are you prepared to face those giants? Do you put on your helmet of salvation, your belt of truth, your shield of faith? Do you strap on the shoes that take the gospel into this world? the breastplate of righteousness. These things ensure our victory. And they help us overcome the giants of life that we'll each face. We may not face a Philistine over six feet tall with a sword or a spear, but we will face discouragement. We will face fear. The fear David overcame that Saul tried to instill in him. 
the fear that comes on us from within. We know that God doesn't give us the spirit of fear. The only fear we should have is the fear of the Lord. But it's a true giant, one that we'll have to overcome in life. And so I pray that when you find yourself on that battlefield of life, you're prepared to face those giants. And that with faith, faith stored up in God, you'll defeat them. Thank you.